anal cancer. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, anal cancer. Anal, oh, I gotta get my pointer. Where's my pointer, Christy? Hand me one of them. Yes. So anal cancer is a little weird. Um, there are a thousand butt jokes that we could make, but we're not gonna make any today. Um, what anal cancer is, is a technically a skin cancer. So that's why it's coming after the skin cancer lecture, but it's connected to the rectum. So it's kind of a weird, do you talk about it in the rectal cancer, colon cancer talk, or do you talk about it in the skin cancer talk? Just because of the way that we treat it, and it's not really surgery as the primary treatment, we're talking about it as a skin cancer, which it truly is. So anal cancer, formation of malignant cells in the anal tissue. If you're talking about the anal tissue, let's kind of clarify that first. So this is that drawing that you see everywhere. Rectum is up here, internal sphincter, external sphincter. There's something that looks like a line, a squiggly line. It goes circumferentially around. It's called the dentate line. Um, this is an important line for a couple of reasons. If it's draining on this side, inside the, the rectum, that's usually your portal drainage. So that drains the same place your colon does, your rectum, into your liver, goes up the inferior vena cava. Below the dentate line is systemic, so it's just like skin. And that's one of the reasons that we treat anal cancer like skin cancer. This also, from an innervation standpoint, if you do surgery here in the anus, it hurts because the skin has a different type of sensation than the rectum. If you cut someone here, have an anal fissure or anal sex, you feel it on the outside versus once you get past the dentate line, you're feeling pressure, chemical irritation or necrosis. So it's not the same pain as it is on the outside. So the dentate line is a separation between portus and systemic drainage, but also nerve innervation. Now that's also important because of the sphincters, but we're not here about that. Anal cancer is anything that occurs in this anal canal or out around your butthole away from the sphincter. As far as the signs and symptoms for anal cancer, we're talking about bleeding. That's usually the most common reason people find out they have anal cancer. They have, for whatever reason, some type of pain around there is itching, um, see a little bleeding and are not sure what it is. This is usually bright red blood bleeding, not purple bleeding that you see with hemorrhoids. When you have that, you come into your primary doctor, they do an exam and they'll see something on the outside. This is also a lot of times the reason that we do an anal exam in your primary care doctor's office is to make sure you don't have anal cancer. You also sometimes can have a lump near your anus, and that's when we talk about anus, we're talking about the sphincter. Um, I think one of my nurses calls it a chocolate starfish, but it's that it's actual the hole that opens up. Um, you sometimes find a lump near there. If you can see something outside of that and you're not in the canal and it's bleeding, it has abnormal borders, it more than likely can be an anal cancer. Now, there are a couple of different things that put you at risk for anal cancer. The most common one is human papillomavirus, HPV. Um, this can cause uh, genital warts. This can cause cervical cancer in women. It's actually causing oral cancer, head and neck cancer. We're seeing a lot more of that because there's a lot of cross contamination between the anus and the mouth sometimes during sex. Oh yeah, this is a sex talk too, so we got there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so the HPV, which we can see in the cervix, anus, and the mouth. But that's one of the biggest risks for anal cancer. Um, and again, because of receptive anal intercourse. If someone has human papillomavirus, typically a male, and they're having anal sex with someone that's un unprotected, 
you can seed their rectum with human papillomavirus that can turn into anal warts, chronic inflammation, anal warts turn into chronic inflammation, that chronic inflammation puts you at risk for anal cancer. Um, history of vulva, vaginal, cervical cancer, again, same kind of thing, chronic irritation, and usually most of these are due to HPV. Smoking puts you at risk for this. And any type of immunosuppression, um, HIV, diabetes, um, transplant patients, anything, anything that immunosuppresses you can put you at risk for anal cancer. Try to decide if this is a good time to have the anal sex talk or not. Um, eh, why not? So, anal sex. If you like it, cool. If you don't, cool. The issue is, is that one of the reasons that we talk about protection so much with anal sex is you have mucosa right there. So the mucosal cells are designed to absorb stuff. So that's not just alcohol. If you're, I can't forget what the kids call it, where they drink all the alcohol and it sucks up into the rectum, but it's also for viruses as well. So that rich mucosal area is designed to absorb stuff. Water helps you absorb water. So it's very receptive and is not designed historically to be able to prevent the absorption of stuff. So that's why there's a high risk of developing HPV, eventually turning into anal cancer, eventually turning into oral head and neck cancers. Now, as far as the treatment, this is where anal cancer is different from rectal cancers and colon cancers. For rectal cancer and colon cancer, it's surgery, plus or minus chemotherapy if it's colon cancer, plus or minus Chemo radiation might be pre-surgery or post-surgery for rectal cancer. For anal cancer, it's always one thing, nigro protocol. There is no surgery. Nigro protocol is basically, I think of it as a uh, ham sandwich with chemo and radiation. What they do is the first four days, they prime your system with chemotherapy. They then add radiation to that anal cancer, and then in the last day, they hit you with some more chemotherapy. They start you off with a little topper, but for the most part, it is chemo, radiation, chemo. The only time surgery falls into this is later down here if you have a problem, and initially when we di make a diagnosis, because it is a biopsy. It usually is not an excisional biopsy. It's usually just a biopsy of a lesion because we have a high suspicion that it is anal cancer. And then we treat with nigro protocol and it essentially melts away and doesn't come back. This, pro this protocol works great for anal cancer um, if it's caught early. For advanced disease, um, we will add fluorouracil and cisplatinum. Um, old school drugs, but they work. Um, and the reason we haven't really changed this that much is because it actually works very well. This, when you add the cisplatin, cisplatin, it's a little more aggressive, so we typically only use it for advanced disease. Um, if you wait a very long time, you have an anal cancer and it invades the sphincters that we talked about, the external and internal sphincters, you will lose bowel continence. If that's the case, that's why we kind of bump it up a notch and use add this. Uh, to be a little more aggressive. Now, if you have a very, 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 very bad anal cancer that is either refractory and doesn't respond to this, or it is super bad and you can't have a bowel movement, or we are no, we know that you already have sphincter destruction, um, then we will proceed with an abdominal perineal resection. Again, if it comes back locally, we will do that, or if you have persistent disease that is refractory to nigro protocol. But again, the majority of patients come in and get biopsy, get the nigro protocol, and they're done, and that's it. Now, postoperatively, again, anal pain and puritis. The funny part about anal cancer, there's nothing really funny about it, but the weird part about it from a surgeon standpoint is that a lot of times patients come in complaining of anal pain and puritis. So we treat them for their anal cancer. Postoperatively, what do they have? anal pain of puritis. And a lot of that is due to the radiation that they have. Some of it's to the chemotherapy effects. 
that gets better with time. Um, some patients get so worried that they want you to re-biopsy them. I do that all the time just to prove that it has worked. Because again, they think anal cancer, I should be having surgery, but you're not. You're having chemotherapy and radiation. So there's a lot of times that we biopsy patients six months out, a year out, just to make sure for peace of mind, I think that's reasonable. Um, a lot of times they also, um, by that time, we say, okay, wait three to six months, the symptoms go away because the effects of the radiation, the effects of the chemotherapy go away, so they're not as bad. They'll still have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that's common. Um, again, nausea is from the chemotherapy, vomiting, chemotherapy, diarrhea is from, um, not only from the rectal irritation, but also chemotherapy because it does it. Um, vaginal irritation, the anus and the vagina, for guys, because we all really know this, there's only a couple of different cell layers between the, the rectal vault and the vaginal vault. Um, so if you treat anything for vaginal cancer, if you do radiation, you're gonna re irradiate the rectum. If you're treating anal cancer and you get some to the rectum, you're gonna irritate the vagina. So the two go hand in hand, just because they're so close from an anatomical standpoint. Um, and you'll have discomfort from having bowel movements afterwards just because we just put 3,000 rads of radiation to your rectal sphincters. So it's gonna hurt, it's gonna irritate. It's when it works, it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. But again, over time, that radiation effect subsides and your symptoms should go away. Um, so pretty much with anal cancer, again, itching, irritation, have it looked at. If you find a spot, we biopsy it. If that turns out to be anal cancer, nigro protocol, follow up with us after it, probably a repeat examination under anesthesia, EUA is how we abbreviate it. Make sure that we've removed all the disease, you don't have any local recurrence. And after that, six months later, your symptoms go away. That's pretty much it. Um, remember, oh, safe sex, HPV, bad. Kids, think about getting a vaccine after you talk to your parents about the HPV vaccine that's offered through your pediatrician. That's it, that's all I got. Take care. Thank you. Pardon? <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with Thunder with the rain. He'll be, he should be ready to come back in a couple weeks. All right. Anal cancer. Take one.